I think you all know uh, that um, um, these uh, web services, uh, uh, the concept of web services side uh, actually came out in the year about 1997 or 1998 or so. At that time, um, it was um, web services were pretty much like in its, uh, uh, you know, uh, basic form. Um, so if we talk a little bit about uh, web services of today, Web services of today can be classified as uh, um, SOAP-based web services, and uh, there are uh, REST web services. Now, um, this this technology came out somewhere around 98, or I would say uh, kind of like 99, or early 2000, let's say. Uh, this came out exactly in 2000. Now, uh, from 2000 onwards, uh, this, this was uh, embraced with open arms and this uh, caught the attention of every uh, enterprise uh, uh, application developer. Is, uh, if uh, an architect was designing a system, an enterprise system where two systems they need to communicate, uh, by default they just used what is called a SOAP based web services. We already talked about the SOAP-based web services being um, something where you have to uh, have, uh, without going into too many details, uh, uh, you have the envelope, uh, so your payload uh, is packed, this, this payload is packed into the envelope, right, and uh, the request is, is sent across um, and the server is going to respond back uh, with a response. So this is response is going to come back again in the form of an envelope. And this is your uh, typical client who would be uh, using uh, these web services. And the client would be majority of the time it was a browser. Um, or uh, basically a desktop uh, application, um, some Windows application or something, right? So that basically was, uh, um, you know, the norm um, all along. Then in the year 2010, uh, something called uh, mobile devices start uh, getting traction. So, um, uh, Apple came out with uh, uh, iPads in the year 2010 and uh, even though REST services were around since the year 2000, people had almost uh, forgot about the REST web services and I'll, I'll uh, explain you what it is and how it works and all that because everybody were, were looking at this and this was working fine because the, the consumer or the client um, was the browser or another application uh, or a desktop application, right, uh, or another uh, enterprise uh, server. So you would have the data going to the other server. They would parse that SOAP envelope, open the data, and then, um, you know, do whatever they need to do with that data. Now, um, REST, even though was out, nobody uh, bothered to use it. The reason for that is... Uh, uh, there was no need for it to be used uh, because everything was being done with the SOAP web services. Now, with the year, uh, with the advent of uh, iPad and uh, Android uh, soon followed with their own tablets and their phones and all that, now there was a need um, for a better uh, way of uh, getting the data from a web service because if you have your mobile device, if you have your phone uh, or if you have your tablet. Now, if you're talking about bringing the data in where you have to open the envelope, uh, parse the data, and then bind the data, that was uh, like a lot of overhead for these kind of devices. Um, since it was time consuming and it, since it was like uh, um, more, um, uh, becoming more and more like a performance issue because of uh, the overhead or an extra layer involved in the form of the soap envelope and all that, they were in the search of something else. And their eyes uh, caught the attention of this rest which was, you know, just sitting there since the year 2000 um, and were only used in universities and whatnot. So now, uh, 
um, they started focusing on this. So uh, in a nutshell, if you have to compare between the two, um, this had enjoyed its, uh, you know, prime time and, uh, um, you know, it had its popularity and all that for many years, almost like a decade. Uh, but now this is the name of the game today, right? So what exactly is the difference between the two? Why REST is catching fire? The reason uh, REST uh, has uh, become extremely popular is because of the fact that it, it runs over the HTTP protocol, right? It runs over the HTTP protocol and it basically all the information you need to pass, you, you will pass it as a part of your URL, right? So there is no packaging of the data in the form of an envelope and uh, no parsing of the data, no nothing. So it's a simple call that you would you would make um, over the HTTP protocol and you would pass your data, whatever data you need to pass, uh, to the resource and then the resource on the server would would take the data input parameters and do whatever it has to and then return the data back, return the data back when the server is going to return the data back. It can return the data back as XML, it can return the data back as uh, HTML or it can return the data back as JSON. Now, um, these two um, were becoming a little bit of a problem when it comes to a non-conventional uh, consumers. What is a non-conventional consumer? Uh, a non-conventional uh, uh, consumer is basically your, your mobile devices, the browser which is running in the mobile device and the browser which is running in the tablet. Now if you look into the statistics uh, right now, um, and this I, I um, I was stating this in my uh, one of my presentations in my mobile um, app testing course. Um, uh, I don't know what is the uh, exact uh, uh, population of this world, but uh, somewhere uh, I think we are flirting with uh, uh, eight billion people. Somewhere between seven to eight billion people, or, or somewhere around that. Um, so out of uh, eight billion people, they say that uh, around eight. 80% of the people now they are using internet in one form or the other, right? And majority of them are in the third world countries um, and you can take uh, uh, Asia, uh, you can take South America, uh, you can take Africa, you can take certain parts of Middle East. Uh, now you, it might be difficult for you to find a person um, who uh, would uh, uh, brush his teeth with a toothbrush. Um, so, but he would use his phone. Now you say that what's the correlation between that? So uh, it's about the necessity. I mean, for us, I mean, brushing a teeth twice or three times a day, that is uh, almost like a norm, right? If not three, three would be pushing like two, we'd, we'd do it. One, definitely. I mean, I have not met a person who would have not brushed his, his or her teeth, you know, every day in the past, uh, you know, uh, whatever your age is and if you have been living in this part of the world. But if you come from, uh, you know, um, a third world country, if it is Africa, if it is uh, uh, South America, if it is South Asia, if it is, you know, uh, Indian subcontinent, uh, you know, you have people, there's a lot of poverty there. They don't have uh, money to buy a toothbrush, but they have money to buy a device. So they have everyone there. Uh, they have phones, right? So. Um, what would they do? I mean, you know, they would not know how to put in their email address or read or write for that matter, but they can watch uh, videos, they can watch uh, pictures, they can watch, I mean, people can press uh, buttons uh, and then do things, right? So uh, the idea uh, is uh, you want to reach everybody all the time uh, and the way you could reach everybody all the time is if you send the data in the fastest possible way and the fastest possible way to send the data is using the REST service. There are certain compromises though. The compromises are, um, you know, it is not 
secured. It's not very secured. So if you are exchanging, um, you know, some banking information, if you're sending, depositing money, you're you're checking your balance. That so I would not. Uh, you know, suggest or nobody uses REST services for that. But if you are doing things like what? If you are doing things like uh, getting data, right? If you are getting some data, and that data could be your uh, any resource. It can be a page, right? It can be an image, right? Or it can be a video. It can be, uh, you know, so anything which you are getting, these are called, these are called uh, resources, right? So now, uh, the way REST services, uh, they work is, uh, it is, um, I, I, I mean, I don't really want to uh, tell you what REST stands for because uh, you could go and then you could Google or better yet, if I tell you, how about if I explain that? It is a representational state transfer. Now you would say that, what the heck is that, right? Um, exactly, we are coming to that. So what it is is, um, here are the here are the resources. Anything, anything, any resource that can have an address, right? That can have an address over the internet, right? You can get that using you can get that using your uh, REST web service. So a page will have an address, right? An image will have an address. A video will have an address, right? Or um, some code, some code which is which is in the form of uh, an entity, right? Which can represent something like it can represent, let's say, customer. So you have some code that is representing a customer, right? So this is a resource. So customer here becomes a resource. So this code would be doing something based on uh, if you if you provide this customer's social security number, uh, it might return something back to you. Maybe uh, it'll return the FICO score, right? So you want to go and you want to buy a car or you want to buy a house. Right. So one of the process of you getting approved is you got to provide a lot of information about yourself. And the critical component is your social security number. Right. So even though there's a lot of other information, your first name, your last name, where you have been employed, do you own a house, um, you know, what is your annual salary, that, 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 that. But the, the most critical is all the others can be uh, more like optional, but you cannot you cannot just run. Uh, and get your credit score without a social security number. You have to have. So like social security number, there are other also uh, some mandatory uh, information. So those input parameters, if you pass to a resource, which is a customer. So what is a customer? Customer is a resource. Resource meaning nothing uh, but some code which is written on the server. And that code could be doing something. It could be, it could be connecting to um, you know, it could be calling uh, like another agency and passing the social security number to that and then uh, getting some response and then uh, it will be checking that, okay, if the score is between, let's say, 680 to 780, we are going to give like 1.2% a, a of, uh, you know, uh, interest rate. If it is between uh, 540 to uh, 6, uh, 80, then we will give like 4.9% interest rate. So this this customer as an entity is nothing as a resource, is nothing but some code written in some language, which you and I, which we don't care, what we need to do is how to call this customer as a resource. So what is a resource? A resource is anything that can have an address over the internet. So if if I place my code, if I create my code, Right? This code I, I probably would be creating in Java or in .NET, in PHP, in uh, Perl, Python, doesn't matter what it is. Right? And I create this code, I dump it on my server, and then I say that, okay, this code is at this address. And I give you the address. The address is going to be like HTTP, uh, www, and uh, google.com forward slash da, da Right? Now, why Google? I mean, you know. We are not using any Google REST API. We're using our own. So I will give you 
the the address of that and then the the place it is and then the name of that of that resource now inside the resource inside the resource right imagine the resource uh, nothing but uh, that's another way of rest calling a web service so a rest, a rest web service would basically go and interact with the resource right and to that resource there is a possibility that you could be uh, basically passing some data to that resource so inside that resource if it is a page resource inside that uh, or if it is a, a house or if it is like a video if it is like whatever that resource is right so to that you might there are inside that resource there might be different functions right like a show as in video if it is a house maybe buy or maybe rent right so um, um or, or rather I, I don't know what buy or sale uh, uh, houses on sale or houses on rent so if so these are called methods these are called methods so the idea here is when it 